Folks, do you ever wonder why your local grocery shelves seem emptier these days? Why, when you had a craving for your favorite pasta, you're instead met with a gaping hole in the aisle? Why your morning latte flavor might be in abundance, but basic necessities seem to be disappearing? Yes, it's deja vu. Once again, we're facing food shortages. But this isn't just about missing out on pumpkin spice lattes, though for some, that's a travesty in itself. It's about the supply chain disruptions that are affecting everyone everywhere. I've been hearing your concerns, your frustrations, and honestly, I share them. The spike in engagement on this channel in recent weeks isn't just a fluke. It's a clear sign that many of you are feeling the impact and seeking understanding. Let me walk you through it. Two years ago, in 2021, we faced a series of challenges. From bad harvests impacting potatoes, yes, the humble spud has seen better days, to unpredictable weather patterns. The domino effect was felt globally. And today, we're revisiting those challenges with an added layer of complexity. Now, some of you may be thinking, I've managed just fine without potatoes. But the ripple effect extends much further. It's not just about potatoes running out in September or the familiar can crunch that follows. It's also about the dairy shortage, which isn't due to a lack of milk, but a bottleneck in processing. Imagine farmers having gallons of milk but nowhere to refine it for consumer use. And then there's pasta. A staple for many, its shortage is reaching alarming proportions. Italy, for instance, has established emergency task forces just to address this. It's almost comical, right? An entire nation rallying for spaghetti. But behind that humor lies a serious issue. Poor Durham wheat harvests are affecting global supplies, pushing countries to extremes. Even our rice, that dependable backup option, is under threat. Countries like India are halting exports, not out of greed, but sheer necessity. Keeping their population fed is priority number one, even if it means global implications. All these disruptions might sound unrelated, but they share a common thread, a fragile global supply chain. Just because we produce abundant crops in one part of the world doesn't guarantee they'll stay there. Corporations will always look for profit. And if selling to the highest bidder means shipping grains across continents, leaving locals deprived, they might just do it. So what's the solution? It's not panic. It's not hoarding. It's preparedness. Stock up responsibly on non-perishables. Embrace flexibility in your diet. Maybe it's time to rediscover some old recipes or experiment with new ones. And more importantly, let's remain informed, understanding the interconnectedness of our global food supply. Join me as we delve deeper into these issues, exploring causes, repercussions, and most crucially, what we can do to navigate these uncertain times. Remember, together, we'll find a way through. And to better understand the challenges ahead, let's lay the groundwork. Here are the 10 shortages that will hit this fall. Number 10. Hey, have you heard about this? There's a major shortage going on with amoxicillin, especially the kind that's turned into liquid doses for kiddos. The Food and Drug Administration is sounding the alarm, warning that this could put children in some real danger, especially as we're heading into the season when respiratory illnesses are on the rise. And it's not just a tiny blip. An Ohio State University study showed that almost every pharmacist in the healthcare system is feeling the pinch of medicine shortages. Nearly a third of them say the situation is so dire that they're having to ration, delay, or even cancel treatments. When it comes to amoxicillin, it's not easy or cheap to just make more. The tools and methods used to produce it aren't exactly flexible. Crazy, right? Number 9. Guess what I heard about applesauce? Due to some wild weather events, apple crops have taken a serious hit lately. Imagine everything from scorching temperatures to torrential rains, hurricanes, and even a fertilizer shortage. It's been a wild ride for these fruits. An expert from French Plaza mentioned that we might see a whopping 50% drop in apple harvests this year compared to the previous one. This means apple-based products, especially applesauce, might become a rare find on shelves soon. 8. And speaking of shortages, there's some news on the power front too. Remember that crazy cold snap we experienced last winter? It not only sent everyone scrambling for extra blankets, but also led to an insane demand for electricity. So much so that the national electricity market had to be suspended for a bit. Even now, our power generation isn't fully back on its feet. Some folks in the grid operations business are even using words like energy crisis to describe the upcoming situation in the U.S. So brace yourselves. 
We might be looking at potential power outages or even price spikes for electricity when the cold returns. It's kind of like deja vu from last year. Number seven. Have you seen those trending photos of bare feminine product shelves all over the U.S.? It's no joke. There's an actual scramble for tampons happening right now. Everywhere you look, from Reddit to Twitter, people are talking about how hard it's been to find tampons. They're sharing pics of out-of-stock signs, discussing frustratingly long wait times, and lamenting the spike in prices. And it's not just some online myth. Big stores are feeling the pinch, too. If you've been to Walgreens lately, you might have noticed they're running low on certain tampon brands in specific areas. A company rep confirmed it. Over at CVS, they've even had to limit the number of tampon packs customers can buy. So, what's causing this tampon turmoil? Well, industry bigwigs say it's a combo of sky-high demand and rising production costs. Plus, the usual suspects like factory shutdowns and workforce shortages, thanks 2023, are making it tricky and pricier to get the materials they need to make tampons. Quite the time to be living in, huh? 6. You might want to grab an extra blanket or two because propane is becoming harder to come by. Between 20 to 25% of propane comes from crude oil refining, and the rest? It's from natural gas wells. Now, with OPEC putting the brakes on oil production and U.S. refining activities slowing down, we're heading into a bit of a propane pickle towards the end of 2023. Remember the last major propane shortage? It got so bad that emergency declarations spanned across nine Midwest states. Word on the street is we might be looking at deja vu. And if you think that's bad, brace yourself for prices that could shoot up by a whopping 40% in the next few months. Number five, penicillin's also making headlines, and not in a good way. Pfizer, the big pharmaceutical company, is sounding the alarm on dwindling supplies of their penicillin products. Their version either lasts longer in the body or mixes two kinds of penicillin. But why the shortage? Pfizer says it's a cocktail of reasons. For one, the demand's gone through the roof, and here's a kicker syphilis rates have rocketed by 32% over the last year. That's a lot of folks needing treatment. By the third quarter of this year, all the combo penicillin shots Pfizer makes are predicted to be out of stock. It's a big deal because, apart from treating common infections like strep throat, penicillin's the top choice for tackling STDs. 4. Ever try digging into your granola or munching on a trail mix without those sweet tidbits of dried fruit? Well, better brace your taste buds. Turns out, our beloved dried fruits, which not only make our snacks pop, but are also the unsung heroes of our favorite fall and winter dishes, are taking a little sabbatical from store shelves. Why, you ask? Well, the folks who produce and sell fresh fruits are currently in a bit of a bind, trying to wrangle up enough supplies. And it's only about to get trickier as we roll into the harvest season with predictions hinting at less than stellar yields. USDA's got their calculators out. And the numbers aren't comforting. And if that isn't enough to make you clutch your fruit bowl, here's a zinger. You know those raisins you sprinkle over your oatmeal or the apricots you nibble on? Fresh Plaza just dropped the news that we could see their prices jump up by a staggering 15 to 20 percent. Looks like some of our holiday recipes are in for a fruity remix. Number three. Hey, bookworms, brace yourselves for a plot twist. Remember how during the height of the pandemic, everyone turned to online shopping. And those cardboard boxes kept piling up at our doorsteps? Well, the paper mills that used to make the pages for our favorite reads saw the boom in packaging demand and thought, let's get in on that action. So they swiftly switched gears from paper to packaging. Fast forward, and we've got a whopping 20% less paper production than in 2019, as per some brainy folks at Era Forest Products Research. Now, as we're trying to get back to some semblance of normalcy, everyone's hankering for a good old-fashioned paperback. But here's the snag. Many of these mills find it challenging to flip the switch back to regular papermaking mode. Plus, with the costs of raw materials shooting through the roof, we're talking a whopping 60% spike as per Business Insider. The price tags on those crisp new releases are bound to reflect the change. Long story short, if you've been eyeing the season's hottest novel or that must-read sci-fi epic, maybe it's time to consider digging a bit deeper into your pockets or giving ebooks a whirl. Who knows? You might just find a new way to dive into your favorite worlds. Two, exercise gear. All right, fitness enthusiasts, let's huddle up and talk gear, or the lack of it. Remember when everyone jumped on the home workout bandwagon a few years back? You'd think by now we'd have those gear shelves brimming again, 
But plot twist, they're not. And can you believe the bike shortage that kicked off in 2020 is still peddling its way into 2023? Bicycling Magazine is still raving about it. And no, it's not just about people buying more bikes. The supply chain's tangled up. There are labor hiccups. And getting components? It's like finding a needle in a haystack. If you're dreaming of those high-end bikes, you might have to keep daydreaming. Because a lack of bits and bobs keeps them off our trails and roads. It's not just the bikes, though. Those intricate parts like brake pads, tires, and drivetrain kits. They're in limbo, too. Derek Fedko, a cool cat who co-owns On Your Left Cycles in Louisville, laid it out plain and simple. If you order a bike now, you might be waiting anywhere from 6 to 18 months. And get this. It's gotten worse, he says. Yikes! And for those trying to beef up their home gyms, dumbbells and weights aren't playing nice either, all tangled up in their own set of manufacturing dramas. So maybe it's time to get creative with those workouts. Soup cans as weights, anyone? Number one, consumer electronics. Hey, tech enthusiasts, got a moment? There's some buzz around the gadget grapevine you might want to tune into. Remember those times when consumer electronics were all the rage and stores couldn't stock them fast enough? Well, there's been a plot twist. Many big retailers, expecting a slump in our tech appetites, played it safe this year. They dialed down orders, thinking we'd be zipping up our wallets and giving those pricey gadgets a miss. And to be honest, for a good chunk of 2023, their predictions hit the mark. Those cool electronics were just lounging around in warehouses, gathering dust while sales dropped. But here's the cliffhanger. What if, just what if, our tech cravings make a comeback? Especially with the holiday season lurking around the corner. Retailers might find themselves in a tricky spot, looking at empty shelves and wishful shoppers. In short, don't be surprised if the hottest new gadget is hard to get your hands on in the next few months. If the tides turn, those tech aisles could get a lot emptier. So, maybe start penning down your holiday wish list a bit early this year. Thank you for staying with us till the end. It's important for all of us to be informed and prepared, especially in these unpredictable times. Your feedback means a lot, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this topic. If you found this video valuable, please give it a thumbs up, and let me know in the comments what you think, or if there are other topics you'd like us to cover in the future. Now, if you haven't done it yet, please consider subscribing to our channel, Finance Economist, for more insights and updates. By hitting that subscribe button, you're not just supporting the channel, but also ensuring you stay informed. Once again, thank you for watching and being part of our community. We truly appreciate your time and support. Stay safe, stay informed, and until next time.